Nice. guys, it's MJ and welcome back to Pet Adventures again. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to help your cat be a little bit more of an open book. And what I mean by that is most cats are very, very scared. A lot of people who own cats typically have very scared, sketchy cats that are afraid of sounds and humans and basically just everything known to man other than their house that they live in and their owners. So the first thing that I do recommend is if you have a new cat, recommended, if, of course it's this is possible if you have um, adult cats, but it's much easier if you have young cats. So young, kitten, whatever <laughs> you can get I guess. Um, the younger, the better, and easier. One thing to remember is cats do usually have a mind of their own. My cat is a mix of a dog and a cat, so she has those good old cat qualities um, if you're looking for certain cat qualities, but she's also got some dog qualities in her as well. And how do you get a cat to act like a dog and be non-sketchy and not afraid of everything? Simply, growing up, you need to take them outside. Wouldn't you believe it? Yes. Um, there are a couple of things that I would recommend, but overall, going outside is probably the first thing that I recommend. If you're wondering how you do this, simply get a very good, nice, uh, you know, harness. This is just a typical harness for cats. It goes on a certain way, which I'm not going to get into, but I have a harness and leash combo. I got this at Petco. It is pink and a little bit of purple there, but it's a typical cat harness. I have a harness and leash combo here. This is a stretchy leash. I do prefer some kind of stretch leash because cats really prefer to go wherever they want. So you want to tug on them very, very little. You don't want to be tugging constantly like you do a dog. You can't maneuver them usually like you do a dog, so kind of let them walk around at their own pace. If they're at a spot for a long time, deal with it. Um, get on your phone if you get bored, whatever, but deal with it if they're at a spot for a long time. Just remember they're not dogs, but they do need to go outside, and I do really recommend having a harness and leash because if your cat gets spooked by something, and anything else, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to control them. First, you want to start taking your cat as young as possible, but well, not as young, young as possible. Obviously, if they're a teeny, teeny kitten, you don't wanna be taking them out. But if you are taking, if you want to get them acclimated pretty, pretty young, like at least I'd say if they're two months old, then that's pretty good. So, um, the first thing I did is I started taking Lucy outside in my backyard. We still do this, we go, we're trying to go on a weekly walk these days, so <laughs> I do recommend doing your yard first. That's the first thing that you can do. And then eventually after you've been doing the yard for a long time and your cat has heard all kinds of sounds, uh, people, trucks, you name it, and your cat doesn't seem to be responding, after your cat's not responding for a very long time, then if you want, you can actually take them around your neighborhood. So if you live in a nice kind of quiet-ish neighborhood that's re relatively safe, <laughs> um, you can start taking your cat with you. Provided I do recommend that you have like a stroller with you. Um, it's a pet stroller. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. But taking a pet stroller with you will help when they don't feel like walking anymore. Um, they don't need as much exercise as a dog do, uh, does, but provided this is also why you're doing it, they do need exercise, just not as much as a dog. So if you have taken your cat out for a stroll, 
outside, it can be in your front yard, backyard, and then you want to do your neighborhood and it turns out okay, then you can start graduating to the park. And I mean just a regular park where they do allow animals, but not a dog or animal park or anything like that. I don't know why I'm still holding this. I got some issues, if you haven't noticed. So you wanna take them to a park that allows animals, but not a special animal park or anything like that. I do recommend taking your cat to a quiet park or maybe in the morning when there are less people. So the less people and the less dogs, the better. So if you can control that somehow, I recommend, again, going in the morning when there are less people and uh, not on a weekend or something like that. Um, or just a park that's generally not that populated. If you hear that, that is my cat meowing at this very moment. One of my cats. One of five. You heard me. I got the five. All right, I'm coming, man, I'm coming. You cannot do all these things without spending a lot of time with your cat. I mean it. If you have a cat, spend as much time with it as you would if you had a dog. Or if you have a dog now, don't forget to spend as much time with it, with the cat. <laughs> it sounds a little different. Most people think that cats don't need attention. That is a myth. That is something that has been spreaded for a very long time. If you don't hang out with your cat, and pay attention to it and find activities to do with it, then your cat will just end up being one of those stereotypical uh, cats that everyone thinks are like naturally scared and naturally don't need attention, which is obviously false. If your cat grows up unsocialized, then you'll have to end up getting it its own cat and it will not be socialized with uh, people and that is my goal of this video. I think that is an important it is important that your cat ends up being socialized with people and sounds and other animals and just everything and all around open. I have seen this been done. It's just that many people again stereotype cats and they have no clue that this is something that you do need to do unless you plan on having a scared kitty that's just doesn't want anything to do with anybody. <laughs> and that is not a happy lifestyle. Things to do inside. When you're with your cat, you need to have treat time. Always give treats out a few times a week at least. Um, I recommend teaching your cat tricks. This is actually a bonding process and it gets their mind working and it's, it's kind of just a nice process between you and your kitty. So that's one thing I do recommend doing treats and adding tricks to it if you have the time. And again, any cat can learn tricks as long as you start early. So if you're, again, if you're getting a kitten or something like that, perfect time to start. Girlfriend, get started today. Trust me, it works. Um, cats just learn a little bit at their own pace. It kind of just depends on the cat. Most cats learn at their own pace, whereas dogs learn a little bit faster but Lucy definitely knows a few tricks on hand that she knows by heart without a doubt. Um, so that is one thing I do recommend. It's a bonding process and it's activities to do with your cat in the house. Another thing is you do actually need playtime inside as well. So I recommend getting a cat wand feather toy. So they kind of look like this. They come on a stick and then they have like a little feather and a string attached and it kind of just, flies around like that. Lucy is literally <laughs> keeping her eyes on me. Do you really wanna come? She really wants to come over here right now. <laughs> so playing with this and other toys, if you want to, you can obviously do like the toys that are uh, like remote control and stuff, but you cannot bond with your cat if you use those. So that's why I recommend using these. These, your cat knows that you control this, believe it or not and it is also a bonding process. So activities in the house include tricks, playing with toys, and just kind of hanging around your cat a lot. And then another thing I would just recommend is relax time. Relax time should happen a few times a week. This is just kind of a natural thing that you shouldn't have to learn, but um, let your cat be next to you while you're watching TV. Um, if you're having a hard time getting your cat to be next to you, 
All I recommend is using catnip once they're older. Um, catnip is effective once they're older only, not when they're kittens. And just gently stroking your kitty and stuff like that if they're comfortable with it. And just you want to aim to make them lap cats if you can when you're watching TV. If not, every cat's different, but you want them to be comfortable in the on the couch next to you, on your bed, uh, or maybe in their kitty bed, which is in your room. All that good stuff is pure bonding, and this does help your cat become more social over time. So it's just general stuff. Have fun with your cat, spoil your cat. Um, you know, buy it lots of like beds or like boxes and stuff. Get it boxes to sleep in, they love that stuff. Get it all kinds of toys, experiment, have fun. Um, it takes time, but overall, this will turn your cat, stereotypical cat, into a dog, at least half. Every cat that is social like this should be half dog and half cat, if that makes sense. And I'm sure it doesn't to you, but you know what I mean. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you love pets. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.